I ran for office because we have too many career politicians. I believe it now more than ever. We limit the president to two terms. It's about time we limit the terms of Congress. Kentucky Senator Rand Paul making his announcement that he was running for president saying, oh yeah, by the way, we need term limits. Someone from the House who very much appreciates the concept of term limits is here at the anchor desk right now. He's Iowa Congressman Rod Blum. Rod, we really appreciate your time. Welcome to Newsmax Prime. I'm glad to be here. Thanks for having me, J.D. So this was something back when I was elected to Congress, part of the contract with America, I voted for it. It was worth noting that we just we made the proposal to bring it to the floor. But then you had guys like Henry Hyde from Illinois and Tom DeLay from Texas saying, wait a minute, we already have term limits. It's called voting for the other candidate. What's the flaw with that argument? Well, I hear, I hear about this a lot from people in my district. They say, you know, there's a 5% approval rating with Congress. So many people are upset with Congress, yet most of Congress is reelected, 95, 96 percent. How can that be? And I think the reason is gerrymandering. I think most of the districts are set up either safe Democrat or safe Republican. So JD, in any given election, you probably have 25 to 35 congressional districts that are actually competitive. And uh, as as we take a look at it, yes, there are those seats that are targeted. It's worth noting the evaluation of the seat that you hold in Iowa mm -hmm. is one of those battleground seats. When you decided to run for the House, did you go with the notion that I'm only going to serve if allowed by the voters a set term? Are you going to lead by example? Absolutely. Uh, I'm not going to self-term limit myself, but I am not going to be there uh, 10 years from now in the House of Representatives. Uh, I back the uh, term limits uh, proposed legislation, which is six years, three terms in the House of Representatives. You know, I agree with that, and I can see myself serving around six years. Uh, as we look at the topics you have to deal with in the United States House of Representatives, things far afield from Iowa, but with implications, I think, of the state of Israel. Your take on what America's posture should be in the Middle East. Well, I think uh, a nuclear-enabled uh, Iran uh, is not in the best interest of the United States, certainly not in the best interest of Israel. And uh, I think we need, well, I am not in favor of, uh, uh, of a weak agreement with Iran, no, no doubt about it. I think we need to be very, very careful about what that agreement says and uh, be prepared to vote it down if it's uh, not in us or Israel's best interest. Israel is a friend, there's no doubt about it. They're our ally. They're a, a democracy and uh, believe in uh, human rights in, in a region uh, that uh, is so unstable. Uh, the Arab Spring has been a dismal failure uh, since it started. and. Uh, the dictators in that area, uh, uh, they were dictators, but at least they were functioning countries. And uh, today we have uh, countries like Syria and uh, uh, Iraq that are not even countries. Border security leads to the whole question of illegal immigration. There are people running for president who have what, to put it diplomatically, might be called an indulgent view of those who have come to our shores illegally, arguing some sort of accommodation. Uh, where do you stand on that issue? Well, first and foremost, J.D., we need to secure the border. I believe it was 1986 under Ronald Reagan, uh, the last amnesty that we enacted. Uh, we were told we would secure the border. That did not happen. And then it was either 2003 or 2006 under George Bush, we had to secure the uh, Border Act, uh, which they were going to build about 1,000 miles of uh, barrier, and that did not happen. So the American people have been let down not once but twice. So whenever we talk about uh, immigration reform, first and foremost, let's secure the border and then uh, we'll, we'll go on to uh, reform this system. Our immigration system is, is out of date for legal immigration and that needs to be looked at. And then of course, the last thing we need to do is look at the people that are already here. And certainly I think uh, that they should not be rewarded for breaking our laws. And uh, the Democrats have some ideas, Republicans have some ideas, and I think we need to debate it in an open and transparent way. Maybe they get in the end of the line for legal immigration. Maybe if it takes, uh, for example, from Mexico, if it takes 13 years to, become, uh, to come here legally, maybe they have to wait 13 years. There's, there's, there's many solutions out there, but we keep kicking the can down the road. Let's talk about it, let's debate it, and let's not be talking about this two years from now. The uh, U.S. Circuit Court, uh, for the 5th District down in New Orleans said, hey, Mr. President, this executive amnesty for, quote, dreamers, we're putting the kibosh on that, upholding the lower court ruling. Do you expect the administration to uh, 
go full throated for a legal appeal to try and continue with this executive oh, amnesty? Of course, of course, I expect them to. Thank goodness it's still being uh, uh, upheld. The stay is still being upheld. And this is one of the reasons I voted against the Homeland Security bill is because it uh, included in it uh, the uh, unilateral and unconstitutional actions of the president uh, on amnesty. So I was a no vote on that for that very reason. So uh, thank God, thank God, the court has come through. Rod, we began the conversation with term limits. Uh, we don't have them here in television, but we do have time <laughs> limits, and unfortunately, our time is just about up. Congressman Rod Blum, who represents Iowa, we thank you very much for your time and uh, your thoughts on issues you're facing now up on Capitol Hill. Thanks, JD. Appreciate it. And Newsmax Prime continues right after this.